So I went ahead and purchased the MI Robot Vacuum Mop P after recommending it for so long. So in this video, I will cover the intelligent features in the MI Robot Vacuum Mop P and the features that actually made me go wow compared to the earlier version that I had. Towards the end, I will talk about what I don't like as well. The first thing I liked is how accurate the map is. In the first run, I ran it with an edge cleaning mode that helps you to quickly create the map of your house. It is able to differentiate one room from the other fairly easily. And it will also automatically divide the space into multiple zones or rooms as it calls it. Now these zones may or may not be to your liking. For example, in my house, it has broken down a corridor into two different zones. Ideally, I would have liked them to be a single zone. Now, if you don't like the zones that it has created, you can easily merge these zones into a single zone or break it up into multiple zones. In this the app, the zones are actually called rooms. Like I said earlier, I don't like it that it had broken up the corridor into two rooms. So now I'll com combine the two rooms into one so that it creates a single corridor. I'll also break up the living and dining areas into two separate rooms as otherwise it is quite big. I can clean them independently as well. You can also rename the zones as you like. Next is the ability to clean each area separately. Either a specific room or let's say you have dropped something in a particular area like in your kitchen, you can only clean that particular area. So to show you a demo, I can select the cleaning of a single room. I can only select that room and start the cleaning. You can see the real time progress of the cleaning on the app itself, which actually is extremely intriguing to me. Once the cleaning is complete, it will come back to the dock. Or if I have spills in certain areas, I can only select that part of the room and have only that part cleaned. The next thing I like is the ability to schedule different areas at different times of day. For example, in my house, I like to clean the kitchen, living and dining areas before I wake up. Since the kitchen, living and dining are far away from the bedrooms, we cannot hear the robot vacuum and it won't disturb me as I'm a light sleeper. For this schedule, you can also select the suction mode. So typically for, for a kitchen which typically gets more dirty in our house, if you want a higher suction, you can schedule a higher suction for that specific room. Next is the ability to select no-go areas. There may be some areas you don't want it to go. For example, while it does detect bathroom doors, if the door is open, it could go inside. So these areas can be set as no-go areas, so you don't have to run and close the doors every single time you're scheduling a cleaning. Other areas could be furniture that the robot thinks that it can go under but it can get a little bit stuck. For example, that's what happens under my shoe rack, which is just about four inches. There are two ways of setting a no-go areas. One, you can set a virtual wall, which will just block the robot from going beyond a certain, certain area or a certain point. And second, you can select a restricted area, which blocks a particular area, but it can go around that area. Next is the ability to recharge and resume if the battery goes really low, that is less than 10% I believe. It automatically goes back to the dock, recharges and stops from where it had stopped cleaning. On the map, it will actually show you the areas it had cleaned and not cleaned in this particular run. So far in my case, I only had this situation in the first run when it was creating a map. After that, since I run it in parts, it rarely runs out of battery. There are a lot of additional options that you can select once in the app and forget about it. Two of the main ones are 1. Selecting a suction power, silent, standard, medium or turbo. I felt that standard works really well on a regular basis and that's what I use. Remember, the higher the suction power, the lower is the runtime. Second thing is the mopping mode, the S mode or the Y mode. 
S mode consumes lesser battery and Y mode consumes more battery. You can also select how much water the robot vacuum should use for mopping, low, medium or high. Now let's talk about what I don't like about the MI robot vacuum Moppy intelligent features. Now it happened to me once but it could happen that the robot suddenly becomes very disoriented and does not know where it is although the map has been created. In this case it keeps trying to look for the dock and it starts remapping again. I really thought the robot had lost it. So what I did at that time was brought it back near the dock and placed it there so it could find the dock easily. Luckily, the map is not lost and once it goes back to the dock, it does show the pre-created map again. The voice alerts can be loud, but thankfully you can adjust the volume or turn it off altogether in the app itself. The last thing I find annoying is the lack of ability to remap only specific areas of the house. So for example, in this area that I have marked, I would like it to select that area as an area to be cleaned but currently it is out of the map scope. A question I did get was why I selected this robot vacuum instead of the Realme robot vacuum which has better specs. My main reason was spare parts availability. I hope this video was useful. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.